Thank you for choosing to worship with us today as we enter to the presence of God and give him glory, honor, and praise. The songwriters wrote, Oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Do you remember that day? Somebody ought to put in the chat window, I remember. Do you remember that day when Jesus came into your life? And you have never been the same. You will not be the same. We worship God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. And we worship him in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> we honor Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus is the risen Savior. He hung, bled, and died on the cross for you and for me and for the whole world. He paid the price for all of our sins and transgressions. Now, nobody needs to uh, be guilty about sin and shame. If you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and received him as your personal Savior, you are saved. Hallelujah. Thank God for salvation. We give a shout out to Tammy Nichols. Hey, Tammy. We give a shout out to Linda Barrett. We give a shout out to Jen Ryder. We give a shout out to Paul Begley and Heidi Begley. We give a shout out to Bishop Elijah Wena in, in Kenya. We give a shout out to Bill Abraham, Bishop Bill Abraham in Tanzania. We give a shout out to people all over the world. John and Eminent Hughes in Paris, France. We love you. We have not forgotten about you. And we thank God for each and every one of you. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, pastor of Back to Basics Ministries and the Back to Basics Online Church, where God is making a difference in the lives of many people. God has provided a way that he can bring his word to the sick and the shut-ins, the caregivers, the lonesome, the hurt, the bruised, the incarcerated, people who cannot go to church, people who cannot even get out of bed. God has made a way that his presence, his word can be brought to you right where you are. And so we worship God. We honor the most high God. There is no other God but the Lord. The scripture says, blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. I feel good today. I feel good today. Andy Mack, we greet you and praise God. Hope you all haven't gotten too much snow up in Connecticut. Glory to God. Well, we thank God for the snow. Thank God for the rain. Tammy, we thank God for the snow in Ohio. We just give God the praise. He is Lord. He is Lord. And whatever he does, it's all right with me. Whatever he does, it's all right with me. Praise God. Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly while the uh, troubled waters roll. Safely, safely, Lord, to thy haven guide. Guide me, Lord. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Guide us, we pray. Well, praise God. We've got a wonderful message for you today. I'm going to be preaching today on how to recognize false prophets, part two. How to recognize false prophets, part two. Yes, we had a little bit of snow down here in Lithonia, Georgia. Georgia got hit with some snow. Folks got uh, caught off guard, many are surprised and shocked. But most of the snow we had here outside of Atlanta, it was about an inch. It's gone now. It's melted. And uh, much of the snow is melted. But praise God, we're, we're praying for you guys up north. And we're praying for you guys in other countries where you have snow and ice. God will take care of you. Keep trusting in him wherever you are. Keep trusting in him. We want to give a shout out to all of you who cannot go to church today. Some of you are shut in. And um, we, we want to offer this service to you that uh, you worship God with us. We praise God the living God. We praise the living God. All over this nation, we see uh, catastrophes, disasters, 
But keep your mind on Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says, thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts thee. Praise God. That's my position. And I pray that'll be your position to trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. And be patient with God, ladies and gentlemen. Be patient. He knows your needs. He hears your prayers. He understands. And God's got his timing about all things. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So learn how to wait on the Lord. I'm learning how to wait on the Lord. The scripture says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He will strengthen thine heart. Do you have sickness in your body? Ask God for healing and wait on the Lord. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. God says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And the scripture says, with his stripes, we are already healed. So wait on the Lord. Don't be impatient. You may say, well, I've been, I've been waiting for uh, 20 years. Well, there was a man in scripture waiting for 38 years. And Jesus walked up to him and told him, rise, take up your bed and walk. So we're, we're waiting on the Lord for whatever our needs are. When you pray, believe that God hears you. And if you know that he hears you, you know that you have the petitions that you ask of him. He said, call unto me. I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I feel good in my spirit today. I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the presence of the Lord. The Lord is in the house. The Lord is in your house. Amen. Wherever two or more of us gather, the Lord is in the midst of us. So we thank you for choosing to worship with the Back to Basics online church this morning. Praise God. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I thought I'd sing that, ladies and gentlemen, because if I try to play somebody's song over the network, Facebook has shut me down and some other networks will shut me down. So you have to put up with my voice. Hallelujah. But get the message. The singing might be off, but get the message. Wait on the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's take a look at the scriptures and then we're going to pray. Then we're going to get into some words. And after the word, <clears throat> we want to ask you to unmute your phones after the word and share your questions, comments, a uh, uh, prayer request, and then we might chat and chew for a little bit. Praise God. I want to give a shout out to my son, Wes, and daughter-in-law in New Jersey. We greet you in the name of Jesus. Well, the scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, I want to read 1 Timothy chapter 4. So we can set the stage for uh, this uh, wonderful message that the Lord has for us. And then we're going to have prayer. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be very careful. We are living in these days. The scripture says some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience feared, seared with the hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast 
attain. We're going to be, be preaching today on how to recognize false prophets and teachers, part two. And Paul is giving instructions to Timothy, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Ladies and gentlemen, believers, Believers will suffer persecution for Christ's sake because people hate us. The world hates us. But but the scripture says that we are to endure, endure afflictions, endure persecution because we're on the Lord's side. These things command and teach. So if you know anybody who's being persecuted, anybody who's suffering because of pers persecution, pray for them, comfort them and encourage them. Let them know that as they hang in there, the Lord will show up. He will deliver. Verse 12 of 1 Timothy 4, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, Paul tells Timothy, until I come, give strict attendance, diligence to reading the word, to exhortation, to doctrine. And some people need to do this. We need to do this. I mean, turn that TV off, turn that cell phone off, except after during this during this service. Uh, turn that uh, stop going to the movies for a while. Turn your attention to the Lord God. Study the word of God. Read the word, study it, internalize it. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. I want to repeat that last verse, that 16th verse, because that leads us into our message for today. Take heed unto thyself. Ministers, members of the body of Christ, we are charged to take heed unto ourselves. Remember whom you serve and who saved you and whose you are. Don't I'll yield to any seducing spirits. Don't cross over to the dark side. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. Stay in the faith. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Stick with the doctrine that got you saved. The gospel got you saved. Continue in these things. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. God gives us a, a specific word. If we do these things, we will save ourselves. We get saved. We will stay saved and we not, will not be blown away. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a large element out there in the churches, in the so-called Christian world. They believe that once saved, always saved. I say, no, nay, all contraire, and yet. Once saved is not always saved. The scripture tells us any man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. And so we want you to stick with God, stick with God, stick with Jesus, stick with Jesus. Don't be like the Galatians. Paul wrote to the Galatians, oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? And ladies and gentlemen, there are bewitching spirits out there trying to seduce you, to pull you away from trusting in the living God. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. 
we praise you. You are wonderful. There is none other like you. We come today in the name of Jesus. I petition you on behalf of the people that you bless each and every one. Meet every need. Rebuke the devourer. Oh God, help us. Help us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. Holy Spirit, we need your help. We cannot make it without you. So we honor you, Holy Spirit. Rise up, oh God, and let your enemies be scattered. Let your anointing be on your word today and upon your people. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Let your word not return unto you void or empty, but save souls and heal and deliver today for your people are waiting. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I thank God for this online ministry, the online church. The online church is reaching people worldwide. Praise God. And I, I want to give a shout out to the online ministers whom God has raised up. And God may want to use you in online ministry, online Bible study, online prayer service. There are so many avenues that God has a need for his people to venture into. So when God speaks to you, should he speak to you and say, this is the way I want you to go, go that way. Trust the Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about how it's going to be done. Walk by faith and not by sight. When God told me uh, to um, stay home on Sunday mornings and, and, and enter to the studio and, and get on the computer and reach the world with the gospel, uh, people laughed at me. And, and the, you know, the stalwarts in the church, you know, the folks who mu are, must be glued to a certain seat 11 o'clock on Sunday morning here on the East Coast. They looked at me and looked at me cockeyed, even some of my preacher friends. And, uh, you know, because they say, if you don't have a church, you ain't a preacher. You ain't, you're not a pastor. But God is using people like you and me, Pe people like Tammy Nichols, Linda Barrett. Andrew McBride, and he's causing us to reach out through uh, the media and the social media and to reach people. God is using the social media to reach people for Jesus Christ. My friend, Pastor Paul Begley in West Lafayette, Indiana, is reaching people worldwide. Praise God. My friend, Bishop Delford Davis in Jamaica, is reaching people worldwide. And so we praise God. We thank God. My friend Elijah Wena in Kenya is reaching people all over Kenya and East Africa using his smartphone. Ladies and gentlemen, using his smartphone. A smartphone can go where you and I cannot go. A computer can go where you and I cannot go. So we thank God for Facebook. We thank God for Twitter. We thank God for our messenger. We thank God for the social media so that we can use it to the praise and glory and honor of God. Somebody ought to say amen. You may say, well, I don't know what God wants me to do. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call unto me, he said, and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. And so God is waiting on you to call on him. And when you call on him, learn how to wait. If he doesn't answer you right away, he's going to answer. You see, God is shaping you. God, God has given you all this good word, this good training, and, and he hasn't done this for naught. He wants to use you to reach out to others. You may say, well, I'm not ordained. I'm not called. Ladies and gentlemen, Men cannot put you in ministry. Men and women do not have a ministry for you because if you trust men and women to plant you in ministry, listen to this, Tammy Nichols, if you trust men and women to put you in ministry and endorse you, the same ones who put you there will kick you to the curb when you go against their wishes. So, ladies and gentlemen, we serve the living God. We were purchased with the blood of Jesus. We were bought on Calvary. And so we belong to Jesus. The scripture says we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not us, but the life. But Christ lives in us. And the life we live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So when God calls you, 
and God tells you, here's what I want you to do. Don't worry about being ordained. Don't worry about having the stamp of approval by men. Your family won't even understand you. Your friends won't understand you. But when you are faithful to God, he will open the windows of heaven. He will open the doors of heaven. I'm a witness, ladies and gentlemen. The very same people who laughed at me and said, hey, he lost his mind. He's crazy, man. He's on the internet, trying to preach on the internet. Those same people are now saying, hey, Pastor Carter, show us how to do this. And when people ask you, show us how to do this, show them how to do it. Praise God, because the gifts God gives us, he gives us for the edification of the body so that we can help build up the body of Christ. Our purpose is to worship God, and God has called us to take the gospel to the nations. Don't worry about finances. Don't worry about money. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not hear me begging for money on this ministry. No, no, I refuse to beg for money on this ministry. You might find on my website a donation card, but you will not hear me wasting God's time and yours and mine begging you for money. God will touch people to give to the ministry. God will touch people. He will send supernatural abundance to you. When you're doing his will, he will provide the means so you can get the job done. I hope I'm helping somebody out there who's contemplating ministry, who's pondering what the Lord has put in your heart. God will make a way. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. How do I know? Because he's done it for me over and over and over and over again. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Praise God. In the Carter house, we're eating well. Amen. We're in excellent health because God is taking good care of us and he will take good care of you also. So we want you to launch out in faith as God shows you uh, what, what he wants you to do. Launch out in faith. And if we can help you and encourage you, let us know. Let us know. Amen. But don't be afraid. You see, Satan's job is to rob, kill and destroy. And he will do anything he can to discourage you and, and prevent you from doing what God has called you to do. But you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In today's message, we're talking about how to recognize false prophets and teachers. Many false prophets, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, point number one. And we'll review a few of the points we had last week. Uh, we're going to go with several points this week and finish up next week. By the time we finish next week, you'll have a, a panoramic view of false prophets and false teachers, how to recognize them and how to avoid the pitfalls. Number one, true prophets can become false prophets. True prophets can become false prophets. That's why the Lord, the Lord gave me 1 Timothy 4 to read to you. And Paul gave Timothy instructions to be a good servant of the Lord. Many preachers, prophets, teachers, many Christians have started out in missionary ventures and answer the call of God. And they were true to God, very faithful, very diligent. But Satan learned their weaknesses and, and, and began to work in those areas of weakness to pull them down. Satan's looking right now to pull you down. That is why uh, Paul told Timothy to be diligent, be diligent, stay with the doctrine, uh, 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 take good care of yourself and stay with the doctrine of God. Pray fast and seek the Lord with all your heart. And ladies and gentlemen, trust the Holy Spirit. Develop a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're saved and you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, seek God, ask God, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can guide you and direct you. Ladies and gentlemen, these are serious times. Ministers are dropping out. Many are quitting the ministries. Satan is oppressing them. He's persecuting them. But God wants you to stand. And he said in Ephesians chapter 6, and having done all, stand. Stand, therefore. Put on the full armor of God because God has given you a job. He's called you. 
He wants you to complete the task, but you cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. And all along, as you're trying to do it, God has called you to do it. Satan's trying to pull you down. But you've got to learn how to wage a good warfare, fight uh, with, with the weapons that God has given you. And you have the victory. You don't have to be afraid. God has not given you the spirit of fear. The devil's going to pop up. He's going to make it look like you're overcome and overwhelmed. But be strong in the Lord and of good courage. I believe this is helping somebody out there. It's helping me. So number one, true prophets can become false prophets. And we see this uh, in many scriptures. I want to highlight 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 15 through 18. Well, read the whole 13th chapter. But there's an old prophet there, and there's a young prophet. And the young prophet had a great anointing on his ministry. And God sent him to a certain place, and, and the man ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit. But God told him, now on the way back home, you come straight home. Don't stop anywhere. Don't eat anything. Don't go to anybody's house. Don't drink anything. You come straight home when your ministry is over. Ladies and gentlemen, so many pastors make mistakes. They preach great revivals. They preach great services. But it's, it's that restaurant they go to after church. It's that home they visit after church. It's that person they visit with after church. Many preachers, teachers, prophets, evangelists, many believers, after a high service in the Lord, when the anointing is powerful, can fall victim to Satan's temptation right after church. Many preachers put let their guard down immediately after service. So beware, ladies and gentlemen. Stay in the spirit. When church is over, if, if, if you're one who needs to go home, go home. Lock your door and continue to pray. Don't yield to temptation. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what I'm talking about. Some of those uh, wayside journeys and stopping off places and road stands, uh, some of those restaurants, they're not for you. If you're high in the Holy Ghost and God has used you, be aware, be alert. You should have somebody praying for you, praying with you. You should have somebody driving your car. Men, ask your wife to drive you home. Wife, ask your husband to drive you home and, and seclude yourself. This way you protect yourself from the enemy. But when you go out there in the crowd, in that restaurant, in that hotel, or visiting somebody's house, you are exposing yourself. You're open to Satan's temptation. And Satan knows who to use. And knows he knows what to use. I know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. He will use every trick in the book to pull you down. And before long, that great anointing you had in morning service where 33 people got saved, uh, five people got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and four blind people received their sight. Before long, you, you will have no recognition of it because you've committed sin. Many people, many preachers commit adultery right after church. Many, many women give it up right after church. And many children are attacked right after church because the saints let their guard down. I believe I'm helping somebody. So many true prophets can become false prophets. This old preacher, this old prophet, heard about the young prophet and the things he was doing for the Lord. And he heard about the, the, the uh, directions that the Lord had given this young prophet. That he was not to stop anywhere, not to go to anybody's home, not to eat any food, not to drink any beverage. And this old prophet told his sons, saddle my donkey. I'm going to see the man of God. And he rode up to the man of God and, and greeted him and told him what a great work he was doing for the Lord. And then he said, uh, come on over to my house. I, I want... Uh, to serve you some refreshments. And the young preacher said, but God told me not to go anywhere with anybody, not to eat anything, not to drink anything, but to come straight home. And the old prophet, ladies and gentlemen, this was a, he was a true prophet of God, but the old prophet lied. God put a spirit of lying in him. And the old prophet said, but 
the angel of the Lord just appeared to me and said for me to ride out here and find you and bring you to my house and to comfort you with food and a place to rest. And the young prophet, ladies and gentlemen, believed the old prophet. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how to recognize false prophets and false teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, people are talking a whole lot of stuff, talking a whole lot of smack. But you've got to learn how to discern. Most of all, you have to have wisdom and you have to have faith and trust in the Lord. What God speaks to you is what God intends. If God wants to change his directions that he's given to you directly, he will speak to you directly. This young preacher yielded to the words of the old preacher. This old preacher had been a true prophet, but God put a lying spirit in him to test this young preacher. Now, this old prophet was not accustomed to lying, but he lied to the man. He said, God said, it's all right for you to come to my house. And ladies and gentlemen, the young prophet went to the old prophet's house, ate food there, and the Lord spoke to him and said, I told you not to come here. You will not, you will not arrive at your home. And so the next day when the young prophet leaves off uh, riding his donkey to go home, a lion met him on the way, and the lion attacked him and killed him. And passersby saw this scene. They saw the old the young prophet lying on the ground, dead, a lion standing over him. The lion didn't eat him, and the donkey standing next to the lion. And I often wondered about this scripture, and I often wondered, well, God, why would you kill the young prophet? And the Lord gives us in his word, we are to believe God, not men. It's better to believe God and not men. Men will lie. Women will lie. People will manipulate you. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, as believers, as ministers of God and, and, and ministers in waiting, you've got to learn how to hear God's voice for yourself. You've got to learn how to commune with God, hear his voice and obey him. And if you disobey, be quick to repent. Be quick to repent. This young prophet did not repent. He got killed on the way home. And then I often wonder, when I look at the scripture, well, Lord, why didn't you punish the old prophet? The old prophet, the rest of the story is not told. He doesn't get punished. But I believe God dealt with him later on, even though the scriptures do not say so. Ladies and gentlemen, the point is, true prophets can become false prophets. So whoever you're following, ladies and gentlemen, you must pray for them. You must most of all, stay close to God for yourself. Paul told Timothy, take heed unto yourself. Don't get blown away because of someone's rhetoric or someone's uh, credentials or someone's uh, charm or someone's charisma. Ladies and gentlemen, so many people in the body of Christ have been fooled because of the charisma of a leader. Ladies and gentlemen, as some leaders uh, start off faithful to God, and get puffed up with pride. Satan knows which bell to ring, which cord to jerk on, and they're blown away. Many churches have been misguided, misled, because the people put their trust in the prophet and not in the Lord. I pray that this word will bless you, that this word will, will help you. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not put men and women on pedestals. We worship the living God. So if you're worshiping a person, well, you've got an idol in your heart. You're praying with an idol in your heart. You put someone else before Jesus. You need to repent, humble yourself, and call upon the name of the Lord. Don't leave yourself open to exposure. Don't leave yourself open to attack like this young prophet did. He was consumed. He was destroyed. A great ministry was destroyed because the man of God disobeyed. Ladies and gentlemen, learn how to pray for yourself, talk to God, get your directions, your instructions for God, and learn how to discern. Learn how to discern. I don't care who the preacher is. That includes me. If you must discern, you must discern. You must check what I preach and what people preach by the word of God. And you've got to stay so close to God, so open to God. 
that you're protected by the Holy Ghost. I hope this is helping you. Here's some other reasons. I'm just going to go down the list. I won't expound on them. Number two, true prophets may give false words under controlling leaders. True prophets, they're true, but because the leaders they're working under are controlling spirits, they preach what the leaders want them to preach. I still I wouldn't expand, but I've got to go here. So many bishops try to control their young pastors, try to control church members. Bishop might not be saved. The bishop might not be, hey, bishop, you know who I'm talking about. The bishop might not be saved, but he's got hundreds of pastors under him, and he wants everyone to be like him. He's not saved. He's got his own ideas, so these pastors must preach his ideas. The pastors must read the book of discipline, and, and, and if, if what God gives them to say ain't in the book of discipline, they ain't going to preach it. Y'all need to repent and call on the name of the Lord later for the bishop. Well, he might kick me out of my church. Well, so what? If you trust the bishop to give you a church, you don't need a church. You need to trust the Lord to give you a ministry. Praise God. I know I'm going to get some feedback and flack about that, but I don't care because it's the truth anyhow. Number three, false prophets are harsh, arrogant, competitive, and self-serving. They serve themselves. Number four, false prophets and teachers do not repent, and they look the other way concerning the sins of God's people. You've seen them in these churches. They're full of sin. They're not going to repent. They're proud and stuck up and stubborn, and then they have churches just like them. They, know, they see the sins in the congregation. I know a lot of pastors who are afraid to preach about adultery in the church. Why? because they're living in adultery and they're surrounded by adulterers and they don't want to lose that money. They start preaching about adultery, they're losing that money base. Come on, y'all. Number five, false prophets and teachers focus on money and they are self-serving. Piggyback that onto number four. Many preachers are afraid to preach holiness and righteousness. They want money. They want they want whatever they can get from others. And so they're not going to touch certain subjects in their pre preaching. Number six, false prophets and teachers use flattery. They are deceptive and they live in denial. I can't tell you the number of preachers, prophets, who try to flatter up, butter up, kiss up to the women in the church. Man, if they get those women wrapped around their, hand, their fingers, man, they've got, they've got slaves. And a lot of these men thrive on developing slaves in the church. Many make slaves of men. I knew a pastor. He had 21 young male preachers under him. Why? Because he was gay and he had all these gay men under him. And they, they, they're praising him like he's the, the great kahuna. But God had to deal with him, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says, thou shalt have no other gods but me. And you pastors have to take heed to God. Be careful how you treat your congregation. Be faithful to God and what he's called you to do. Be holy, God says, as I am holy. Number seven, false prophets and teachers prophesy and teach their own thoughts, not God's thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, if your preacher is not opening the Bible, not preaching from the Bible, but preaching from his or her dissertation, you need to get your hat. You need to do the boogity, 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 shoot. Get out of there. Get out of there quickly. Number eight, false prophets and teachers follow the lust of their flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some churches, you got your gay churches, they're filled with gay people. Now, I'm not bashing gay people, but I believe if you're gay, you can be delivered. You can be delivered. If you're gay, you can walk straight. You surrender to the Lord and ask the Lord to deliver you. You can be If you're a lesbian, you can go straight. You God has a cure for lesbianism. But the thing is, in many of these churches, they flaunt it and they promote it and they don't and they blink their eye at it and they don't preach against it. They don't know how to they don't they know how, but they don't take a stand against those demonic spirits that are causing people to live 
in ways that are contrary to the word of God. I know this is the word of God. I know it's a blessing. I know it's helping somebody. God wants you to take a stand. But they might kill me, Pastor God. They might uh, cut me off from my salary. They might kick me out of the parsonage. So what? God will provide for you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging for bread. Well, Pastor God, you've never been kicked out of a church. You've never been kicked out of your house. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I've been kicked out of a church. I've been kicked out of the parsonage. They kicked me and my family to the curb. But God, hallelujah, but God, Tammy Nichols, but God provided. He will provide all of your needs. He will provide. Number eight, false prophets and teachers follow the lust of their flesh. Number nine, false prophets and teachers pay attention to deceiving spirits and persecute the godly. Ladies and gentlemen, false prophets open their hearts to deceiving spirits. Many are money grabbers. Many are greedy for filthy lucre. Many are greedy for sex. Many are greedy for materialism. And they open themselves up to deceiving spirits. We look at our Congress today. Senators and representatives, uh, uh, they're resigning by the numbers because they open themselves up to deceiving spirits. Ladies and gentlemen, and the sad thing about America, Americans are quick to point the finger after a person gets caught. But that finger you're pointing has a thumb on the other end, and that thumb points back to us. The scripture says, for all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But even though we have sinned, we don't need to dwell in our sins or remain in them. You can be delivered through Jesus Christ. Number 10, false prophets and teachers are arrogant, self-willed, and reject authority over them. False prophets don't want anyone checking them. No one with authority over them. Number 11, false prophets and teachers move God's people away from simple devotion to the Lord. They can take someone who loves the Lord and corrupt that person with the quickness. And, and, and it's not all the blame of the false prophet. You can't put the blame on the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got the hunger and thirst after the living God. You've got the hunger and thirst after the living God and keep your mind on the Lord. Read your Bible, study your word, pray, stay in fellowship with God, commune with the Lord. Number 12, and we're gonna go up to number 20 reasons today and then finish it up tomorrow. Number 12, false prophets and teachers annul God's commandment. Matthew 15, 19 says, whoever then annuls one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, God's commandments are pure. Number 13, false prophets teach as doctrines the precepts of men. They don't preach the Bible. They preach what men think. And men change. Women change. We think different thoughts on a daily basis. But we've got to keep our mind on the Lord and to think his thoughts. How do you think his thoughts? By studying the word of God, by staying in fellowship with God, by praying, by fasting, by keeping your mind fixed on Jesus. Number 14, false prophets are uprooted by God. Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted, Jesus said. Number 15, false prophets follow men's teachings and call themselves by men's name. Ladies and gentlemen, I see this all over Christendom. I remember in the Baptist church, everybody was doctor. Hey, doc. Men, men call, I mean, you get called to, the, to preach all of, all of a sudden you're a doctor. You can't heal nobody. You ain't been in medical school. You don't know the difference between a chromosome and a gene, but now you're a doctor. And so uh, people start calling you a doctor because men call themselves doctors when they call the preach. And, and men get puffed up by titles and men's titles. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a sin and a shame. False prophets, false prophets call themselves by men's names. Bishop, hey, bishop, hey, apostle, hey, elder. Everybody's an elder. Everybody's a minister. You teach one Bible study, and, and, and after that, you're a minister. 
And then I, it, what saddens me is a number of people who really don't know Jesus have not been called, but their pastors or their bishops send them off to school to study the ministry. You must be called into the ministry, ladies and gentlemen. God must call you. I went to seminary with a lot of people who were not even saved. And they would get on me. They hated on me because I asked them, have you been born again? I just asked the question, have you been born again? And they hated on me. No, my pastor said I was the top prospect out of our church family. And uh, since I was going to college, they got me this scholarship. And when I finished my undergrad, I got a scholarship from my church to go to seminary. Ladies and gentlemen, seminarians, many seminarians do not know Jesus, have no relationship with him. They've studied about him. They, they've got their credentials. And when you get your credentials through a seminary, your seminary or your denomination is automatically going to ordain you. So what we have is a whole lot of people being ordained because they have the educational background, but they don't know Jesus. And that's why the church is so messed up in America. And ladies and gentlemen, when you go outside of America, you see a lot of churches in other countries trying to duplicate what Americans are doing. So if Americans don't have it right, look at the world. I know what I'm talking about there too. So as we continue, as we try to bring this to a conclusion, number 16, false prophets and teachers lay foundations other than Jesus. Their foundation is not on Jesus. They would take a family in the church and because that family is wealthy, they build a whole ministry around that family and let that family ru run the ministry and that family runs people's lives. Oh, I know that's right. Number 17, false prophets and teachers boast in men rather than Jesus. They boast in men. Ladies and gentlemen, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. A few years ago when I moved here, there was a big name preacher. Everybody boasted about their preacher. And they laughed and looked down at people going to other churches. And I, and I would communicate with them. They said, oh, no, you need to be sitting under my pastor. And they gave me his name. Ladies and gentlemen, they promoted that pastor and, and, and uh, uh, laid their foundation on him rather than Jesus. And just three years ago, when it was exposed what that pastor was doing, now those people don't even mention his name. In fact, they don't even want to talk to me. Well, but Lord Jesus, have mercy. Number 18. False prophets promote divisions. They divide. They divide. That's Satan. Satan. Satan's ministry is to rob, kill, and destroy. False prophets are, are, are disciples of Satan. They promote division. They spread division everywhere they go. Number 19, they preach a gospel of works rather than grace. They preach a gospel of works rather than then grace. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in a church and, and, and they make a workaholic out of you, every uh, campaign that comes up, every project, you're asked to be on it and you can't say no. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you need to learn how to say no. You need to say no. It's not a sin to say no. Hey, tell your pastor, look, hey, I'm working on 18 committees already. I'm stressed out. I'm maxed out. I'm stretched out. You need to learn how to say no. The gospel is not about works. It's about faith and works. If, you, if you're trying to get to heaven by being on the kitchen, kitchen committee, you're an usher, you sing in the choir, you're in the band, uh, you're on the uh, pastor's aid, uh, 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 you go to the prayer being. I'm not talking about a prayer meeting. I'm talking about the prayer band. Uh, you participate in every dinner, you work in the kitchen, you cook, you prepare, you clean the chickens, you cook the chickens, you sell the chickens. Ladies and gentlemen, you're working yourself to death. Where's there room for Jesus? And that's why many of our churches are suffering because they've been preached a gospel of works rather than faith. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said when he fed the 5,000, make the men sit down. I believe 
that before you give a man an office in the church, make him sit down, make him study the word, try him, prove him, let him study for a season. Women too, because once you ordain them, once you lay hands on them, and if they don't have any scripture, no solid scripture background, you've got a mess. What you have is uh, officers in the church who don't know Jesus and who get puffed up and think they're kahunas and they do whatever they want, say whatever they want. And that's typical of most churches in America. And so let's finish up with number 20 for this, this series today. False prophets and teachers use trickery, craftiness, and scheming. Yes, they go behind the scenes. Before the church meeting, they have already met with the deacons. They have already met with the stewards. They've already met with the trustees. They've already met to get the mother of the church's approval. They've already met with the uh, leading giving family in the church about the direction the meeting ought to go to. False prophets, ladies and gentlemen. I call them punks in the pulpit. Hey, Tammy Nichols, I call them punks in the pulpit. They have already met. They have already initiated their tricks and their schemes and their craftiness. Ladies and gentlemen, we looked at 20 ways in which you can recognize false prophets. Come back next week. I'll give you 20 more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I've got a list of 40. Come back next week. We'll give you 20 more. Praise God. We look, we're we're going to expose the false prophets. We're going to expose. You see, God wants some serious preachers. God wants some serious Sunday school teachers. God wants some serious husbands. He wants some serious wives. He wants some serious children. He wants people who are going to be able to stand on his word. These are the last days. People are being blown away. It's going to get worse. Or it's going to get worser, as they say. And so God wants you to be able to stand. And so he wants you under an anointed teacher. He wants you under someone who is serious, someone who has the fear of the Lord in them. God wants you sitting under the anointing of a Holy Ghost led teacher. So many of you do not attend church anymore because you see the exposure, you see, you, you see the idiosyncrasies of the church. You see how the church is bro broken down. You see the false prophets. You see through um, the falseness, the phoniness, the hypocrisy. But I'm so glad that we can meet you on the online church. And we online preachers have responsibility. We cannot just preach the word. We've got to live what we preach to you. And so discern, ladies and gentlemen, discern, ask God. And until God shows you another place to go, I want to invite you to continue with us until God lays his hands on you and say, here's where I want you to be. It might be that God will raise you up to start a new ministry, to, to start a Bible study in your home, or to start a Bible study in the community center. Uh, God wants you to reach out to people. So that people's eyes will be opened by the Holy Spirit. He wants to use you to tell people about Jesus. Well, praise God. We praise God. We want to extend an offering to those of you who may be listening and are not saved. You can be saved today. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and be your Savior and Lord. Repent of your sins. Confess your sins. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life and be your Savior and your Lord. And the Bible says you are saved. Read Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And then let us continue to pray for one another. Let's pray for one another. And if I can be of any help to you, please give me a call, 404-205-11. 01 or send me an email Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com or hit me up on my Facebook 
either at my Leroy Carter page or the Back to Basics Ministries Incorporated page. Or there are other ways, Twitter at BTBMIN. Praise God. We love you. We thank God for you. Pray for somebody. Pray for our nation. Pray for our president. He's got a heavy load. Pray for our Congress. Pray for our leaders. Pray that America will repent. Pray that the nations will repent, that all be saved. Praise God. We're going to close out, uh, say goodbye to our Facebook family. Facebook family, we thank God for you. And we're going to stop the recording on the Go to Meet Me station. But please stay on. Let's chat and shoot. I want to hear your questions, any comments you have.